Hi there, and welcome to our webinar. Our phonics shed webinar today is all about using our GPC characters for engaging phonics teaching. I'll just wait for one moment uh, for a few people to join. So Phonics Shed is a narrative driven, multi-sensory, systematic, synthetic phonics program. And we use characters as well as lots of different teaching types um, to combat different types of learner throughout the scheme. This is what we'll be looking at today. We'll be looking at using GPC characters, the importance of stories, GPC characters in our full SSP scheme, and then have a look at the teacher hub. So using characters, now, like other schemes, we have characters throughout our scheme and for each GPC. The reason that we've done this is because associating the characters with GPCs lends itself to storytelling and putting these characters in meaningful context, which the pupils can relate to, and it makes them easier for them to remember. And these characters underpin the whole of our phonic shed scheme and are referenced in the flashcards, decodable books, lesson plans, interventions, teaching books and formation rhymes. The characters are used when introducing digraph and trigraphs, assimilating pupils' prior knowledge when they've been using single letter sounds with their new knowledge, which makes them easier to progress at a fast pace. And this assimilating new knowledge with prior knowledge is a proven technique, which was first um, introduced by Donald Hebb, who was an influence, who was influential in the area of neuropsychology and famously said that cells that fire together wire together. So by activating prior knowledge and then introducing new knowledge, these two things then fuse together and it means that recall of this new knowledge becomes a lot easier and retrieving this new information. Now we make sure that we teach our characters in a meaningful context to give the people something to relate to. Each letter is linked visually to an animal or a human character, for example, Curly the cat and Monty the monkey. The visuals and the alliterative names allow children to create concrete links with the sounds. The use of the characters will particularly aid those children who struggle with abstract concepts, especially when combined with the multi-sensory aspect of the programme. And this is just why stories are so important. People find stories interesting, easy to understand and easy to remember. And this is one of the reasons as well that we have included characters throughout our phonic shed scheme. And these characters appear not only in the teaching books, but also appear in all of the pupils decodable books. So they get to really know them. Now, the importance of stories is very clear from lots of different research. Both storytelling and story reading have been found to be successful educational strategies that create significant improvements in language acquisition in young children. It also improves their oral and spoken language and develop their reading comprehension. So there's lots and lots of research that suggests that story reading has a knock-on, a very positive knock-on effect within um, spoken language and uh, increased vocabulary within pupils. Scores who scored highly in the phonics screening check note that building a love of stories and reading plays a big part in their success. And the 2019 survey by the Literacy Trust found that the children who enjoy reading were up to three times more likely to have higher than expected reading levels for their ages. And those who read daily are twice as likely to be above average in reading. Since the 1960s, research has repeatedly shown that reading for pleasure is an indicator of reading ability and was also suggested that reading enjoyment and ability have more impact on children's overall education than socioeconomic factors. Here are some of our characters, well, all of our characters, in fact, within the phonic shed. So you can see we've got our single letter characters. So we've got um, Indy the Imp, for example, and then the single letter characters appear in the digraphs as well. So here we've got Indy the imp, as well as our Ollie the otter there for that digraph. 
So the children really get to know these as they pop up in all of their decodable reading books. They also pop up in the games that they play, as well as the flashcards that you'll be using daily. So it's really a brilliant concrete anchor for them and their GPC knowledge. Now, looking at our multi-sensory scheme, we use our characters within all the different aspects of the scheme, one of them being songs. So here's one. Ring the duckling loves to sing, singing is Wing's favourite thing. Whenever Wing sings a special song, everybody sings a so that's the Wing the Duckling song, which is for Ng. We also have them in actions, which is a really nice kinesthetic way for pupils to associate the GPC with a hand action or arm action. Here's one again for Wing the Duckling. These are brilliant guidance videos for any teachers or teaching assistants who will be delivering the sessions and they themselves will also get to know the characters throughout the scheme. This one's for A, Anna the Ant. This is the letter A. The character for this letter is Anna the Ant. The capital letter is an ant hill. The sound these letters make is A, A, A. The name is A. The sound is Ah, ah, ah. The action for this is ah, ah, ah. We also have them on our flashcards, as I mentioned before, but underneath our flashcards, we also have our formation rhyme. So the characters not only help them recall GPCs, read them in words and then within sentences and stories, but also with letter formation as well. So if we look at the letter C, which is the diagraph, K, curl down Curly's tail to her claws, down Kit's body, with his arms, then kick with his leg. So here you can see K is made up of Curly the cat and Kit the kangaroo. And that makes the sound buck duck for K. We also have formation rhymes for the capital letters as well, which you can see. Our characters underpin all of our lessons. So this is how we introduce them through a lot of the processes which we've looked at already. So first of all, we show the flashcard and introduce our new sound. This one in particular is for Sam the Snake. So we'd show the flashcard and introduce the character. So this is Sam the Snake, say hi to Sam. And we say the sound it makes and the pupils copy. So And the name of this letter is S. And then we introduce the action for Sam the snake. So this one's hands together and wriggle upwards like a snake from your chest to face, saying the sound. We then listen to the song. And we have a go at the letter formation. And the letter formation rhyme for this one. And this one, we either do the rhyme, we show the formation, and you model this as the teacher. We then might introduce Sam the Snake through the teaching book, so through a story. So we share the character's storybook and we use the book as the same name as the character and we emphasise the focus sound every time we read it. So we're really sounding out in each of those. We then later might introduce the capital letter, which we've introduced here as Sam's mummy. Now, the characters in our books, we've got 140 teaching books, which introduce the characters when you're introducing a new GPC in the lesson and 120 decodable books for the pupils to read. These you can also assign digitally for them to access on their login. So these phonic shared character based stories also cover lots of important and relatable themes such as emotions, social skills, mental health and self care, which allows the children to identify with the characters and engage at a deeper level can also help the children address their own thoughts and feelings or relating it to their past experiences 
about the stories, the issues that are raised within them. Now, our characters provoke active engagement, and this is a key predictor of academic success, which is the amount of time that the student is actively engaged within the learning. And we make sure that we use the characters to do this, whether it's doing the flashcard recall, so the pupils are actively recalling the GPCs that they've known already, imitating the sounds and the letter formations at the beginning of the lesson, using the actions which relate to the character, singing the songs, taking part in reading and writing GPCs which are related to the character. So that character which underpins the entire lesson really promotes active engagement for those pupils. Now I'm going to quickly show you the teacher hub and we'll look at the resources, the games and I'll answer any questions. So this is what the EdShed homepage looks like. Whichever subscription that you have, it will always look like this. It's the teacher hub. To get to our phonic shed resources, you would click in here. There's a really lovely digital flashcard tool here, which you can do with high frequency words and graphemes. You can choose whichever chapter it is that you're doing or specifically choose individual graphemes and click start. They then look like this and we can flip over the card to see the formation rhyme on the back. If they haven't quite got this, you can reshuffle it and click see again and that'll be reshuffled within the pack. So that's a really lovely tool. You might have them as um, physical flashcards, but it's a really nice tool to be able to do that on the interactive whiteboard and make sure that you are targeting those specific GPCs that the children really need to practice on. Within each chapter, it's then reorganized into sets and you can see different things within here. So this is where you would see the planning. We've got daily phonics planning, consolidation planning and intervention planning. So three lesson plans for every GPC within our scheme. Here you'll be able to find the teaching books. You might have them as physical books or want to put them on the interactive whiteboard, which you are able to do here. Each of the teaching books have comprehension questions on the last page and each of the decodable reading books have uh, comprehension questions also on the last page, as well as high frequency words and common exception words in the first page to recap before you read the book. Now also within here, we have got our decodable reading books, the songs, our guidance videos, which I've also shown you, our letter formation animations, such as this, which also has the rhyme underneath. We also have a really good assessment tool, and this can double up as practice for the phonic screening check. So if you go into your group, which might be a class or a specific phonics or spelling group and go to data, you can then click launch assessment session. Here, you can then choose whether it's specific graphemes you want to come up, a specific word list, high frequency words, or whether you want to do the screening check simulator. And all that will do is it will be the same process, it just changes what appears. So here we can select the whole chapter, chapter two if you would like, or select particular sets. Then we select the child that we are assessing first of all, it gives us some instructions and then it will come up like this and the child will be next to me and we're looking for them to say the sound that they can see in front of them. So we can mark that depending on what answers they gave and that will then populate the table underneath, which we can then change at a later date if needed. We can also set ebooks and games on EdShed as assignments. What we can do there is go into our assignment section here. I've played as a spelling people. We can see our Wings Big Racket book has been read by one pupil so far. And we can also see the game that I have set. So the game here that I have set is sounding out the grapheme ng. And I can see here that one person's played it once, they've got 100% correct so far. 
and the other pupils haven't yet played it. If I go to the game screen, I'll give you a quick look about what some of those might look like. Now, when you set assignments, you can have the option of the pupils being allowed to have access to the whole of the phonic shed garden, which I have here. If you don't want that, you can simply flick a switch and they will only have access to what you have set them. Here is a quick look at some of the games. So we have first sounds, last sounds, or the sounding out game. Matt. Matt. Mm. At. Now we also have vocabulary games and matching graphemes with um, the sounds, which would be like this. So you have to match those. And then the same with words as well. We've also got um, another really nice one, which is the indie pop, where you have to pop the mm. balloons. Mm. 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 And so on. So those are the games that you can set the pupils on their logins to make sure that they do it on the GPC that you have taught that day. They also might have access to all the books or just the books you have set them, as there is that option. And here's how they can read their decodable books at home if you don't have the hard copies. You can get a free trial of Phonic Shed for either individual teachers or whole schools to try, should you wish to, which can be taken out via our website. If you have any other questions about uh, subscriptions at all, please email support at edshed.com. I'll just have a quick look and see if we've got any questions, which I don't think we do at the moment. But I hope that was helpful for you today and you got to know our Edshed characters just a little bit more.